So today we're joined by Daniel here. He's over from Germany. And Daniel's a very good player. He's been here kind of training, playing some matches, some tournaments, some ITFs, some uh, over 35s. And uh, you're leaving soon. So we thought we'd do a session on uh, Daniel's backhand, looking specifically at his backhand, because his all-round game is very solid, plays very good level. However, there might be a few things that we can help him with on his backhand. So today we're just going to have a look. We're going to hit some balls. And then I'm going to try and give him a few pointers on things that he can try and do to help to help his two-handed backhand. That's a great interview. Like we, I've done with loads of players that, that regardless of the level, and that's just tr learning to use the left hand a little bit, let's say smoother. Yeah. So you're going to be on the service line. You're going to take your backhand grip like you would. Yeah. So spin the racket, find your backhand grip, and then just remove your right hand. Yeah. And then the goal is actually not to hit a left-handed forehand, but to have the right swing path with your left hand. So you're going to start back. I'm going to give you, and you're just going to play cross from the service line. But really try to keep your arm, I mean, not locked straight, but relatively straight through the whole shot. So you feel like you want to imagine that when you swing, that somebody's standing in front of you. So you actually have to swing forwards and round them. Yeah. Hey, yeah. If not, I get Jonas to come stand in front of you. So, <laughs> and, and nobody wants that. Okay. So you're going to play not like 40%, but really focus on keeping, when you take the racket back, keep that racket head up, let it drop and not try to overwork the wrist so the wrist shouldn't really be doing any any work it's more that the arm stays sort of 75 to 80 percent straight good you can use the right hand to point at the ball if you want yes good a little bit longer yep a little bit less soft like so that become a little bit more solid in the wrist at the moment it's a little bit flimsy you want to keep it a little bit tighter yeah, that's a nice one. Yes. One more. Good. Now I want you to play kind of towards the baseline. So you really have to catch. Yes, good. Keep the follow through good as well. Yeah, that's a nice one. Good. Same thing. You're going to put your right hand now, but it's going to do nearly no work. Yeah, so it's still a, like 85%, 90% left hand, but the right hand is just there for guidance. And again, you don't need to step in. Just let the ball come to you and try to feel it. Too much wrist. That's a nice one. That was nice. Good. On left, naturally you found much nice, much nicer distance between you and the ball. I want you to be try and be strict with yourself that your habit is going to want to step in. I want you to play down the line. I want you to obviously don't let the ball drop, but don't try and like crush the ball like you don't need to take it on the bounce or anything so wait for it so it gets in the right height let it come and I want you to play down the line without using the body to kind of like push it down the line you know what I mean so I want it wait for it wait for it and then hit it nice and strong and relatively flat yeah so that you get into the feeling of waiting for it and lean with the body without like running into the ball yeah and you're just gonna play down the line Vamos. All like this. Yes. Wait even more. Make sure you have an... Oh, sorry. No. Oh, nice. So you have more distance. That's the one. Don't crush it. Oh, nice. Too much spin. More flat. Yeah. Yes, that's the one. Try to take the hands a little bit higher because a lot of time they're here on the hip try to take them sort of around shoulderish height it's it's it might i mean it's similar to if, if you were re taking the racket back like this on the forehand it would also be quite difficult whereas you want it i mean again not super high but you want it around this height same on the backhand so sometimes it 
nearly in your pocket. So try to get them this, everything the same, but just fractionally higher. So around chest height. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. That's it. Nice. Because I get the feeling that when you play here, it's like because the hands come from down, you need to them close too soon. Whereas if they're here, naturally, you obviously want to close, but that you're not doing this part. Yes, nice. That's a nice one. Yes, careful you don't run into the ball too fast. That's the one, much better. Swing your backhand. A little bit slower if you can. Okay. Take it back one sec. Yes, and then if you don't mind. Yeah. As you go to, uh, let go of actually the right one. The right one's fine. So now go to swing. Slowly, slowly, right, stop. So here, try to let go of the right. So let, let that one. Let you feel like this part of the ball, uh, this part of the movement, sorry, the swing a little bit more. So yeah. that racket head, really the tip of the racket goes. And instead of closing that way, so the wrist, yeah, exactly, there we go. So the, the close is like an after part. It's not the main movement. Yeah. Like you swing forwards and then the racket closes. Yeah. And then you should get a little bit, exactly. Because it, sometimes it's like, it's, forced, yeah. it's a forced close. Yeah. And same like in the kick serve, forehand, when you want more spin, if you try to force it, the ball actually loses energy. It doesn't bounce. And if you just relax and you let the, like the natural movements of the body flow a little bit more. And it's the same on the backhand. It just like, ugh, just let it go and then let it close. Come on. A little bit close. Now you're starting to go into the ball a little bit more. Be calm. Let it come to you. Yes. Good, good, good. Better technique. That's the one. Woo. Good. So what happens sometimes when you move in too fast or step in the court, which can be a mistake that people make. They want to take time away, which is great. But if you're taking time away and your legs aren't like planted well, then you're not getting that much benefit out of taking the ball early because you're losing energy. So if you're in a good position, then all the energy that you're creating with your legs and everything is coming up through your hands, through the ball. But if your legs aren't planted, then there's no stability. There's no foundations in your, like in the strength that the shot is coming from, which I think was happening a lot on the forehand. You set up, you wait, bam, you go. Even if you step in, you step in enough, but you set, wait, hit. It's like if you were trying to play forehands jumping, you know, you wouldn't get the same power than if you start from the base. And it's the same thing on the back end when you rush, you lose the technique, you don't have the same foundations, whereas you let the ball come. Again, don't we don't want to let it drop, step in if we have the chance to, but the foundations are good, and then you can hit a much cleaner shot. 